Welcome back. In this video, I will discuss Given a set of rules and facts, how can we use backward chaining technique to prove a given query in proportional logic? I have already discussed forward chaining technique. The link for that video is given in the description below. In this case, we have been given some set of rules. These are the set of rules here and these are the two facts given to us. Each of these rules and facts are in term true here. That means uh, P implies Q. L and M implies P, all these things are true, as well as the facts, that is A is true and B is true here. Given these rules and uh, facts, what we need to do is, uh, we need to prove a query, in this case the query is Q here. In backward chaining technique, what we do is, uh, we will start from the query Q, and then we will go on uh, checking backward until all the premises are true here. So what we do first, first we will check whether the query is already known. That is, we will check whether the query is already true or not. If it is already true, we will stop here. For example, in this case, the query is what? Q. If uh, the Q is already present in uh, the facts, the meaning is what? It is already true. So, we will stop here. So, right now, uh, Q is not present in uh, the fact here. So, what we need to do is, we need to select some rule where Q is present on the conclusion. If uh, query is present on the conclusion, what we need to do is, uh, we need to Prove all its premises uh, are true in this case. Now, in this case, if you look at here, Q is the query. This is the only rule where Q is present on the conclusion side. So, what we need to do? We need to prove all its premises. In this case, P is the only premise. We need to prove P is true here. If P is true, then Q is true. The same thing will be repeated again and again until all the premises of the rule become true here. So, this can be done something like this. So, initially we will start with the query Q here. The Q is not the true. So, that is the reason what we do is we will select a rule where Q is present on the conclusion side. So, it is the only rule where Q is present on the conclusion. So, what we do is we will try to prove all its premises uh, true here. So, how many premises are there? There is only one premise that is P here. Now, if P is already true, we will stop here. The meaning of this one is P is true. Because P is true, Q will also become true here. But P is not true. What is true right now? Only A and B are true. Remaining all rules are true. But uh, P is not true in this case. Now, what we need to do is, uh, we need to select a rule where P is present on the conclusion side. This is the only rule where P is present on conclusion. So, what we do is, uh, we will try to prove all its premises true. So, how many premises are there? One premise is L here. Another one is M in this particular case. So, what we need to do? We need to prove both of these uh, Premise is true. If they are true, P will become true. If P is true, Q itself become true here. Right now, L and M are not true. What we need to do is, we need to select a rule where L is present on the conclusion side. Now, L is present on conclusion side in two ways. One is A and B implies L. Second one is A and B implies L here. So, what we can do is, we will select this rule. Why do we select this rule is, we know that A is true, B is true. So, in that case, L will become true in this case. So, that is the reason we will select this one. So, one premise is A here, another premise is B in this particular case. Now, we know that A is true and B is true because A and B is true, L is also true in this case. Now, we have proved that L is true. What about M? M is not true right now. Because of that, what we need to do is we need to select a rule where M is on the conclusion side. So, this is the only rule where M is present on the conclusion side. The premises of L are B and L. We need to prove B and L are true here. We have already proved that L is true. And the second one is B. B is the given fact that is true here. Because L and B are true, M will become true in this case. As L and M have become true, the P will become true. Because P is true, the conclusion Q becomes true in this case. So, this is how uh, we will uh, follow backward chaining from the query until all its premises becomes true. Once all the premises becomes true, the query will also become true in this case. So, this is the simplest process uh, what we can follow in backward chaining technique to prove a given uh, query, given a set of rules and facts. I hope the concept of uh, backward chaining is clear. If you like the video, do like and share with your friends. Press the subscribe button for more videos. Press the bell icon for regular updates. Thank you for watching.